Osu, a dance of fire and ice, and Mustache. If you're watching, you've probably at least heard of one of them. These are three examples of the most popular rhythm games you can find today. Now I want to ask you a question. What do all of these games have in common? Some of you may try to talk about the overlap in gameplay elements, and some of you may talk about how all of them are the weebs. But eventually, you will begin to realise the obvious answer. Well, they're all rhythm games. Kind of a stupid question. And while that's a brilliant answer, what if we decided to look at the other thing staring at us right in the face? What about the thing that makes rhythm games rhythm games? Yep, we're talking about the music itself. And as you play a certain rhythm game more and more, you may come to be able to recognise the distinctive sound of a certain artist. A lot of these games have a rather large circle of what we like to call rhythm game artists in common. These are artists that have willingly contributed their music to rhythm games, and I've come to realise that unfortunately, not much is known about these artists within the community itself. All that we do know is that they produce good music that is usually considered experimental or sometimes even downright bizarre. So this begs the question, who exactly produces this music? Where do they come from? And what is the story of some of the top artists that are so heavily featured in rhythm games? This is a completely new series where we aim to answer these questions and shine the light on these rhythm game artists. The first artist we'll be looking at is one of the oldest and most popular artists in the rhythm game community, who's produced many experimental tracks specialising in hardcore and speedcore for a range of different rhythm games. Tomoyuki Hamada, also known as Topaz Light. He was born in Japan in 1985, and little was known about his childhood and early teens except for the fact that he enjoyed playing video games and used to play parodias in elementary school. It wasn't until high school that he began to play rhythm games, and by the time he hit college, he set his eyes on producing music. He began to use doors for the first time and wrote songs, and in 2004, at 19 years old, started making Toho arrangements in his own dojo circle called CHS which stood for Club Hyperspeed at the time since he was very into club music and was inspired by it. However, soon this changed to cutie and head shaking sounds, though it's unclear when exactly this change took place. Unfortunately, no tracks from this early of a time could be found. However, by 2005, he became increasingly active in music production and began to participate in music contests to challenge himself and get stuff out there. It's believed this is when he started going by Topaz Light, and when asked later about the origins of his name, he would say, at that time, I was called Topazosan, so when I looked up the one with Topazolite in the dictionary, I found Topazolite. From there, as a result of using the handle name Fortune Teller that was popular at the time, don't know what that is, it became T plus Topazolite. By the way, the reading is Topazoraito, but there are a lot of questions that I don't know how to read. Anyways, because of this, this song joined in the third edition of what's known today as one of the biggest rhythm game music competitions, the BMS of Fighters. The BMS of Fighters is a contest that allows artists to form teams to produce music in a format called BMS, which stands for B Music Source, and is a format originally created for use by the Beatmania series, but is now also used as a way to create music, similar to MIDI files. How is it used to create music? Well, each note in Beatmania has a sound attached to them. If you're familiar with Osu, you can imagine these as hit sounds, and the artist maps the sound they produce to each hit sound to eventually create a full song. Pretty cool, right? Once teams have been registered, they have until a certain date to begin submitting their work. And all work that's submitted is registered at a venue, which is a public website where other people can listen to your work. Within a certain amount of time, your work has to gather impressions, which is a rating of your song from one person that has a score of points between 1 and 100. Once this period ends, your average points is calculated, which is the total number of points divided by the total number of impressions of your song. The team with the highest average wins, and the teams with high placements usually have their songs picked to feature in other rhythm games. Topazolite took part in the 2005 BMS of Fighters contest on a team called TH with two other members, Excalibur and Sunfree. It was for this competition that Topazolite produced the song Little Sister Bitch, a happy hardcore arrangement of the legendary Toho theme UN One Was Hers, and is the earliest track I could find made by him. Here's what it sounds like. Not bad for the first song he really put out there, but you could also tell by the sound quality that he was still a beginner. 
his team ended up scoring 21st out of 43 participants, and individually his song ranked 32nd out of the 127 songs produced. Not bad for one of his first competitions, if not his first competition. The tracks he made in this year are all featured in the album TNT, TBZ and Toho from 2005, as well as tracks from other years up to 2009, which was released later. In May 2006, less than a year later, he released his first album on his Dojin Circle, CHS, called A Limited Spark. This featured 16 songs that were all remixed Toho arrangements. The songs here are all a massive step up from Little Sister Bitch, and the fact he improved this quickly showed his talent. This included Unlimited Spark, a happy hardcore remix of Marissa's theme featuring a vocal artist named Rizuna. Necropotent, a Necrofantasia speedcore remix. World's End Yamag Zanadu, a hardcore Fate of 60 Years remix. And Moko Moko, a chill breakbeat version of Reach for the Moon Immortal Smoke. As you can see, Topazolite has already begun to do a variety of genres, which shows his early talents and creativity. One thing you may notice while listening to these tracks is that these tracks don't sound anything like the original tracks melody-wise. This is because Topazolite either creates an entirely new one using only some of the notes from the original one, or one of the subtle backing melodies to the original track as his own lead melody. For example, This kind of talent to take something like this and make it a completely different song is something that not many people can do, and is one of the reasons he began to gain recognition from fans and musicians alike. On top of all this, he even shows off creative use of vocal samples early on. It's clear that Topazolite is rapidly grown as a musician, and he further proves this later in his performances in the BMS of Fighters 2006. That's right, Topazolite returned again to the BMS of Fighters in the 2006 edition, but this time participating with seven other people in a team called Goji Zoristo, or Typographical Tourist as a rough translation. Three of these people were creating BMS files, Topazolite included, and the others were in charge of the background art and trade and check-in? Not sure where they are. In this iteration, Topazolite produced another legendary happy hardcore track called Electric Butterfly. This track did extremely well in the competition, scoring 20 out of the 121 tracks that was entered with just 34 impressions, and overall his team ended up placing 10th in the competition. Clearly this was an amazing year for Topazolite. What was next for him? Sometime before the BMS of Fighters took place, Topazolite ended up joining the independent Japanese music label, Hardcore Tennessee, formed in 2003 by Yoshikazu Nagai. As you could probably guess, Hardcore Tunnel C is a label specializing in creating hardcore and J-Core music, as well as anything in between, but they've also dabbled in many other electric genres, such as breakcore and dubstep. It was originally known at the time as, uh, that, pronounced Hardcore Tunnel C, but changed its name to Hardcore Tunnel C in 2007. You'll find out why later. On the 13th of August 2006, they released an album called Speedball, which was a project that featured hardcore, gabba and speedball tracks from various artists within the label such as DJ Technorch and USAO who is quite popular today. For this album, Topazolite released I Hate You Because I Love You, which is a speedcore track that sounded far more aggressive and intense than what he usually made. It's likely that he was just experimenting with a different style in this, and the chorus melody reminds me of a popular song made by him in the future called Countdown 3 to 1.
In March 2007, a video that was a hardcore remix of the well-known theme from Mega Man 2, Dr. Wily's Castle, was released on a website called Nico Video. It turns out this was Topaz Light, collaborating with another artist known as Kamiya Mao, who some of you may have heard of because of this song. This track is called Oku Senman, Hardcore Mix, and it sounds like this. Though at the time Kamiya's vocal range was not quite there for the higher keys in the song, it's a very catchy remix and will be more relevant a bit later. Topazolite was also working on an album called Neat Mania, which is another album that featured various Toho arrangements. This time, Topazolite worked with three others, Yuna Shino, who is in the Dojin Circle Electrojin, Ziki underscore 7 in the Dojin Circle Dustbox 49, and Shimosuki, who was in charge of illustration and was also part of the Dojin Circle Electrojin. This album saw Topazolite explore new genres and expand on its own ones with some examples being an amazing baroque track called Suki Made Todoke Agono Shakure A speedcore track called Demystified Force and a rave club sounding track called Fanta. That personally I think is a banger. One track that surprised me was Kettlemate, which is labelled as Pianotronica on the YouTube video that hosts the album. This is what it sounds like. Although the song can be quite repetitive, I just couldn't get enough of this seemingly simple song when I first listened, and it was a great change of pace from Topazolite considering he specialised in hardcore and dance music. It also obviously shows his ability to play piano. This album showed the incredible versatility of Topazolite, with just a few years of producing under his belt, and if this isn't enough to show his talent as an artist and producer, I honestly don't know what is. There were also some great tracks from the other two artists on this album I enjoyed listening to. There was a solid trance track by Yunashino called, I have no idea how to pronounce that, Samizome Sakura, and an amazing electro track by Ziki7 called Genosis. This album subsequently released in a Toho convention called Reitai Zai 4 in May of 2007. I highly recommend anyone interested to check out this album, link is in the description. Shortly after this, in July 2007, Topazolai is one of the artists in Hardcore Tennessee that are selected to perform at a show in a building called Heavy 6-0 in Tokyo. This show was called the Tennessee Second Strike. The event preceding this was the first Tennessee Strike, and they decided to hold another one with their updated roster. Topazolai is seen in this video performing his song, Unlimited Spark Stardust Mix, which is an updated version of the Unlimited Spark song from his first album. <laughs> A little over a month later, on the 31st of August 2007, Hardcore Tenno C released a new album containing a total of 15 songs, featuring 17 different artists from the label. This included Red Alice, another well-known hardcore rhythm game artist, DJ Shimamura, an artist that's well-known for his melodic J-Core, and of course, Topaz Light himself. This was the legendary album Hardcore Syndrome, and it was the release of this album that saw the change from the original name to the Hardcore Tenno C we know today. For this album, Topaz Light released the track, of course you need 
and need and need and need and need me at least as creative and well just listen to the first few seconds As you can tell, it's a very intense hardcore, hell, even borderline speedcore track that sounds completely different to anything he's produced so far. He takes his knowledge of jungle style beats to the next level with the drum samples in the beginning and this bridge section. Now don't get me wrong. There are a lot of tracks out there that have this kind of style. In fact, there's a whole genre based on these kind of beats called breakcore. And I hope to cover artists in this genre at some point. But at the same time, this kind of stuff was completely unheard of, especially in Japan. And even if it's significantly more popular today, it's still ridiculously complex to create something like this. Combine this with a far more heavy hitting hardcore kick, the sinister synth melody which I believe is original, the far more creative use of vocal samples and the refined song structure and you get this bang over tune which to be honest completely stood out amongst the rest of the tracks in the album Topaz Light completely outdid himself for this album and this is where he really started to shine and gain a following On the 22nd of September 2007 Hardcore Tennessee held a third Tennessee strike but for this event it was a release party of Hardcore Syndrome this featured all the artists that played a part in Hardcore Syndrome, performing some of their own songs to an audience. And of course, Topazolite was one of these people, and he can be seen performing the chorus section of I Hate You Because I Love You. Check it out. On December the 8th, 2007, Topazolite participated in yet another Tennessee strike this time participating in the 4th strike. This man has an insane worth ethic. Unfortunately, there's no footage for the strike, so it's unknown why he performed for this. And finally, on December the 31st, 2007, Topazolite released a new album in the CHS circle to end the year, which is called Got Maze. This included several songs exploring different genres yet again, most notable of which being Yoru to Suki to Ano Goto, which is another completely different genre that uses some kind of a string instrument and a flute. It sounds like This reminds me of game soundtracks that are used for desert levels and again this shows the versatility of Topazolite. He also created another legendary track in this album. This time, Topaz and I went the route of exploring the heavy jungle breakcore beats from Of Course You Need Me and had the amazing idea of combining it with Chiptune. This track is called Chipscape and is one of his most well known tracks today. This was an absolutely amazing year for Topazolite, and it would only get better from here. Early 2008 was less active for Topazolite in terms of music production based on my findings. He was either taking a well deserved break, or he just didn't upload much of his work from this period. Either way, it was a bit more quiet, until something interesting happened. Oku Selman, that Mega Man hardcore remix I talked about earlier, was added to the Flash based VSRG, Flash Flash Revolution. Why is this interesting, you ask? Well, in order for Flash Flash Revolution to add music to the game, they have to gain explicit permission from a chosen artist. This means that someone in the Flash Flash Revolution community reached out to Topazolite for permission, which clearly indicates that he has indeed slowly been getting recognition outside of Japan. This marked the beginning of Topazolite getting even more of this global recognition. And to top it off, his songs were not being added to the game when it was starting to get a lot of attention because of how popular Flash based games were at the time. Three other songs were also added to the site throughout this year. Necropotent from Olympus Spark, Cannon Cannon also from Olympus Spark, and Summertime Perfume, a track mix between hardcore and trance made in collaboration with a label called Tribute Cafe, made in tribute to DJ Tucker. Fun fact, this was also made in 2007 and released in August of 2007. As if this man wasn't already working hard enough, he also participated in two more Tenno C strikes, the fifth strike and the sixth strike. 
but this time the fifth track was being held in a different venue, Club Neo in Osaka, whilst the sixth venue remained the same as always. Later, in August 2008, Topaz of Light was featured on Hardcore Tendency's sequel to Hardcore Syndrome, Hardcore Syndrome 2. This time there were 14 artists producing a song each. For this album, Topaz of Light produced another one of his most well-known tracks, which went by the name of To Love Me, I Start For You. I have no idea what that sentence would mean, so I'm just going to call it Star. Anyways, here's what it sounds like. This was another intense speedcore track with a similar structure to Of Course You Need Me. Hard hitting bass kicks at fast tempo, another breakcore bridging section, and several catchy melodies. The use of vocal samples is also more apparent than ever, and he even used some samples as very high pitched bass kicks. He was getting more and more creative with this kind of stuff, and it was clearly shown. The next few years then kind of fly by for him. At the end of 2008, Topazolai released another new album onto his Dojin Circle called Ultra Q, which featured collaborations with four other artists, Dobu Usagi, Thanatos, and two vocal artists, Riku and Rizla. Most of the songs had the same classic Topazolite style of happy hardcore and speedcore, but there were some songs that caught my eye that had a different approach. These ones being Voyage 6003 and 10Q385. 2009 then started off with the release of a song on Hardcore Tenno C on the new album Speedball Z, which released on January the 2nd, 2009. This was a sequel to Speedball, and clearly a reference to the Dragon Ball series. For this, he produced the song Do I Smile, which is a speedcore track with the best drop I've heard from it, as well as there being an insane speed up towards the middle. Topazolai then started collaborating with Rough Sketch, an artist who's known for his gritty hardcore and speedcore tracks, and together they created the album 108 Sketches, which is exclusively hardcore and speedcore. This released on May the 5th, 2009. Later that year, Topazolai released two more albums on the same day, December the 30th, 2009. One of these was Gotta Maze 2, a sequel to the previous Gotta Maze album, which contained some collaborations with two DJs, DJ Yocho and DJ Nurikin, as well as Electric Butterfly and Wedding Cake which is a remaster of Electric Butterfly. The second album he released was Unconnected, which was another album of Toho arrangements, and included a variation of Unlimited Spark called Limited Spark, and a breakcore remix of Satori Maiden, Third Eye, called Unconnected. Fast forward in a bit. Between the start of 2010 and the end of 2011, Topazolite released four new albums onto his Dojin Circle, including a sequel to 108 Sketches, 108 Sketches 2 with Rough Sketch. He also released a new song onto Hardcore Tenno C for what is now the fifth edition of Hardcore Syndrome, called Kick Ass Kung Fu Carnival, which is one of his most popular tracks today, and rightfully so. Super intense speed core with a complex but also catchy melody and a ton of creative switch ups so that you don't get bored listening to the same thing over and over, not to mention even more vocal samples and breakcore. Within this time, Topaz Light began to get more and more songs onto Flash Flash Revolution and from there he also started to get recognition from the Step Mania community. Then came 2012, which is when Topaz Light was beginning to hit his peak. On January the 13th, 2012, Topaz Light released his first full album on the Hardcore Tennessee label called Songs for X Girls. By this point, Topazolai has fully found his style, and no other album within this period explains it better than this one. This album contains some seriously amazing songs, and the consistent quality of each track for me surpassed all the works previously done by Topazolai. To name just a few of the tracks that stood out for me, let's start with the amazing To Love Me, I Star For You, The Reprise. This track is a remaster of his previous track, To Love Me, I Star For You, and honestly, the only thing that overlaps with the original version is the melody and the chorus. But even then, the song sounds like a completely different track. Let's have a look. First we'll listen to the original, and then we'll go to the reprise. The quality sounds 100 times better. The kicks are less overpowering, but still manage to hit hard. The song structure is more creative. Hell, there's even use of different instruments now. 
hear that piano in the beginning. Or how about that violin, which leads the melody of a completely remastered break chord section. This is honestly probably my favourite Topazolite song to date, just because of how well this was done. Then we have Lemon Heart. At first, this doesn't seem to stand out. Just some happy hardcore after all. The melody is really satisfying to listen to, but this is something we know Topazolite is capable of until this happened. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a fan of dubstep, and I freaked out when I heard this, simply because I had no idea he was even interested in dubstep, let alone capable of producing it. This section pretty much sounds like your classic dubstep song, and then goes back to Happy Hardcore to finish off. This was just a very sudden reminder that Topazolite is very capable of changing up his style and genre if he so wishes. We also have some good old speedcore tracks called Sugi Hagi Construction 2012 and Distorted Love Song, featuring Rizna yet again. There are also some remixes of some of Topazolite's previous work by Red Alice, who made a really cool To Love Me I Style For You remix, DJ Norikin and Noizentio, all artists that are part of Hardcore Tennessee. Overall, this album was some of the best work we've seen from Topazolite, ever. Later, on the 20th of April 2012, Topazolite released another new album called Answer From X Girls. This also contained songs that were of insanely high quality, including some remixes from DJ Genki, Aran, and Kaka Snook? What? This also included a reprise of Of Course You Need and Need Me, which just beefed up the sound quality, especially around the main instrument. Another one of my personal favourites from Topazolite was also made, Cheat Reel, which is one of his most popular songs today, if not his most popular song. It has one of the catchiest melodies I've ever heard for a hardcore track, whilst also giving out that feeling of dread from the keys used, and everything from the build up to the climax is executed perfectly. He manages to find another way to surprise me with his use of vocal samples, as well as this part. Which to be honest is a big hit or miss for some people, but it definitely doesn't detract from the quality of his track, and it's guaranteed to get your head bopping even if you aren't a fan of hardcore. Topazolite released two more albums this year. So Many Materials on the 11th of August 2012 and Ultra Cutie Breaking on October 28th 2012. This year was also a breakthrough for Topazolite when it came to rhythm games. Sometime earlier, a music contest was in place for a rhythm game that came out at the start of the year. This was the first edition of the beloved Sound Voltex series, Sound Voltex Booth. The contest was simple, you had a certain amount of time to remix a single song in this list. All of these songs were originally created by DJ Taka and the goal was to remix it to sound like it could be in a game such as Sound Voltex. They call it Voltex Style. Topazolite chose to remix the song Tomorrow Perfume, resulting in the Tomorrow Perfume TPZ Despair remix. I can't even hear the original melody in this. It's literally a completely different song. It definitely did the job in being Voltex style, and as a result was one of the winners of the contest that ended up being added into the game on October 2012. With this remix, he also left a note. Nice to meet you. It is Topazolite who is active in Hardcore Tennessee, CHS, and so on. Red Topazolite, mostly T+. Thank you very much for adopting the remix. I tried to die the original song, something like this tomorrow is full of hope, in despair. But I think it was died in the bad end with a good feeling. By all means, please do not lose despair and clear it coolly. 
What was also really cool about this though was that another artist, Seashell, participated in this competition and chose to remix the same song as Topaz Light and also won. This is presumably how they met due to them noticing this in the collaborations they would later do together and eventually they would become known as an entirely new duo called Light Show Magic, who you likely may have heard of from the most popular song, Crack Tracks, that features in South Vortex 2. From this point onwards, Topaz Light surged in popularity. His songs began to be mapped on the rising rhythm game star, Osu, with Cheat Reel becoming his most popular song as a result of it going viral on there. He's contributed to many more rhythm games, including numerous sound Voltex editions, Mai Mai, Taiko no Kasujin, and most recently, Ustash. In the coming years, he would release over 15 new albums, and this is just in his Dojin circle alone. The quality of his music hasn't dwindled in the slightest, and it's clear that he cemented himself as one of the biggest rhythm game artists of our time. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe and comment on who you'd like to see next if you enjoyed watching. If you didn't enjoy it, then leave a dislike and a comment on what you'd like to see changed. I'm always looking for ways to improve and would appreciate any criticism. Finally, please be sure to support Topaz Lights and Hardcore Tennessee's music. Links to their music platforms are in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in a bit.